Hello! It's Saturday morning and I'm headed off on an adventure. Recently when I went to Hawaii, I flew out of Salt Lake City and flew back in, um, but the times that I was there were not conducive to some shopping that I'd love to do while there. And I just decided that since I'm on spring break, I should do a little shopping adventure. This might be a book expedition or a thrifting shopping trip or a combination of both. Um, I'm leaning more on the thrifting as far as what I'm planning right now. I'd like to go to the Goodwill Outlet store, which is an amazing shopping experience. Highly recommend. Um, and there are a couple of other vintage and thrifty shops in the Salt Lake area that I'd like to go to. They have tons there, but I just have a few on my list. And, you know, I'm going to be in the city with multiple Barnes & Nobles, so I might have to hit one up. So probably the next time I check on you will be when I reach Salt Lake City. So for now, let's just take a look at the gorgeous Wyoming weather that I'll be leaving behind me. This is my front yard. And here's a look at my backyard. Snow, 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 snow. Okay, so we had an adventure at the Goodwill Outlet. Um, let's see if I can get you a shot of a pile of stuff. That crate is full of books. And then I've got some clothes that had interesting fabrics and textures to play with. There's a big red World Atlas there. And I am kind of out of breath because I just went for a needless walk. I drove to Murray, which is basically the south end of Salt Lake City, to go to a shop called Needful Things that had really good reviews, and they are permanently closed. Dang it. <laughs> There's one more shop on my list that I want to try before hitting any bookstores, and um, that shop is called The Clever Octopus. And it's um, kind of a foundation. They div they believe in like reusing old things to make new things, especially art. So I mean, right up my alley. Uh, let's see if that one is open today. It's supposed to be open on Saturday, so keep your fingers crossed for me. Look at this cute store. Got a little octopus out here to greet you. Okay, that store was really, really fun. And the lady there, Marianne, who who works there, um, she let me know uh, that 
if you arrange a private shopping, you have to spend a minimum of $100, but you can arrange it if you reach out and contact the store. Um, and I spent 36 just snooping around and I, I only covered part of the store. So she was super nice. Okay, camera's freaking out. Anyway, she was really nice and um, was really interested to see what I made with the stuff that I bought. So I'm gonna tag her um, once I have stuff made. And let's see if I could show you this bag behind me. This fella right here is full of stuff. I'm really, really excited to create with the items that I got there. So um, I think it's time for a bookstore and my car definitely needs wash because of all the winter snow crap roads in Wyoming. So I'm gonna hunt for a car wash, maybe some lunch, and then go to the bookstore. Yay! So it's not gonna be possible to haul right here because this parking lot is a nut house and I'm sure there are people waiting for my spot even as we speak. It is the worst I have ever seen this parking lot. So I'm gonna get the heck out of here. I'm gonna head to Park City, Utah, which is where the famous ski resorts are. Um, it's a little bit easier to navigate around there and there's a couple of places I wanna hit. And yeah, take care of some stuff before we go home. Whew. We made it back home. Well, that was a good day of shopping. <laughs> I was able to get a lot of things that I needed and a lot of things that I wanted and had a nice fun day just getting out of town. So are you ready for the haul portion of this video? It might take a while. Okay, so let's start with the stuff I got at Goodwill Outlet. We're going to kind of shift through everything in stages so I can remember to show you all the things. Yeah, and I switched to my camera that doesn't zoom in and out so much just to make my life easier. Um, fighting with this, with all the items I need to show and everything. Yeah, anyway, let's get to it. So we're going to start with the fabric items that I got at the Goodwill outlet. So what they do is clothing is priced per pound. So you put all the clothing together. Books is also priced per pound, but it's a different price. So you kind of just have to sort out your stuff. They weigh it. And then you pay like a little pittance for what you're getting. Um, and it goes toward the good cause, so it's lovely. Okay, fabric items. Um, the first thing I have here is actually a new item, meaning that it, the packaging is still on it. It is an infinity scarf that I thought the print was interesting. It had, it has kind of like greens and reds, a little bit of yellows. Um, it still has the tag, as I mentioned, and the price tag, and it originally priced at $3.99. Um... I probably, like, I haven't done the math to figure this out, but I guess that I paid, like, 50 cents or less for this. So, that'll be fun. I can play with some scraps for that with maybe covers or closures even. Of course, all of this fabric's going to be used for junk journaling because it's me, right? And as I said, I'm just pulling things that have interesting fabric. So, this blouse had some red lace that's a very dark, like, crimsony red. This top has some sparkly burgundy lace. Um, the sleeves are sheer, and then the regular part is lined, so there's also this burgundy lining fabric that can be used. In a similar color vein, I have this embroidered jacket that's kind of a burgundy purpley. It has all this gorgeous embroidering on it. These little circles are leather and then they have little flower coins and then there's sequins and beads and all kinds of fun stuff. This is a shimmery kind of silver uh, piece of curtain that could also be used for a journal cover. This seems like just a big piece of uh, fabric. You can see we've got black with red embroidery flowers and then the reverse side is the red there. That's a massive piece of fabric. I don't know how many use it all, but we'll try. 
this is like a little girl's dress, like a tiny little girl. Bright pink with some gold blossoms on it. This piece is a floral embroidered denim. So you can see I was very much going for a theme here, embroidery, lace, that kind of stuff. This is a top that just had a really pretty print that I liked. I might use this in my Hawaii junk journal, which I still haven't started making. I need to like decompress and process and stuff because yeah, I just need some time. This, I don't know if I'll actually use, but I thought it's dirt cheap. I'll never see something like this ever probably again, but we have this like gold, like ruched lame fabric like not dark gold like Elvis used to wear, but like kind of a light gold. Again, I don't know if I'm going to use it for anything, but you never know. Here we have a linen shirt with a floral print on it. This fabric would be really good for a cover. Now this last fabric item that I got there, you might think I'm insane. And I might be. But I'll tell you, I have wanted to get something like this to pull apart and cut up um, for a long, long time since I started junk journaling actually. And I found one at Goodwill Outlet, which is the best place to buy something like this. It's a wedding dress. <laughs> Look at this gorgeous beading. I mean, uh, yeah. And we've got lots of gorgeous white satin and then more beading at the bottom this so I've had this vision to do a junk journal that I call white woe which just is white 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 to make you say whoa I know it's dumb but there you go um and I thought a wedding dress would be perfect for that and maybe this is a quinceanera dress or another like prom prom something I don't know I'm calling it a wedding dress I think this is going to be really fun plus since it is a gown, it has a whole bunch of tool underneath, and tool can be very handy for all manners of crafting. So, this is fun. <laughs> okay, now we've got some more items from the Goodwill outlet that are not clothing, and we're going to start with this big guy right here. It is, I don't know if it would be officially termed a hat box or something, it was with the luggage, and the closure is broken. I have some hardware similar to this so I can replace this and fix it um, and if that doesn't work for any reason I guess I can just use it as is it does open up and has this nice lining inside it is I'm guessing pretty old let's see if we can find a makers thing or anything yeah I'm not seeing anything Inside are a couple of items that I just tossed in there because it all gets measured by weight anyway. There is this little coin purse that's got like some velvety fabrics and things here. I'm going to be cutting that up to use. And there was a stamp set. Lots of flowers, a leaf, I think that's a little bee down there. Alright, this guy you saw earlier um, in my car. This is an Atlas of the World by National Geographic. Um, it says damaged first something pages something, which is probably why I didn't sell anywhere. Um, I don't care if there are damaged pages. Randomly opening up to a massive map of Australia. There are a bunch of books that I got just to use for, like, the pages inside for, um, fillers, etc. Or I can make altered books with them. Um, those kind of things. This one is called The Wonderful Tune. It is, let's see if I can find a copyright. It's from 1928. It has this gorgeous colored illustration in here. And we might have a couple of poems and things. It seems to be short stories, like a little like school reader that you might have. So I can use some pages from that and I can also use the cover for something if, if I decide to. This book is The Little World of Don Camilo. And I am not sure why I got this one. I, oh, I think I, I think I was thinking that it would be a good size for an altered book. Decent amount of pages, good like 
proportions. This one is all the Mowgli stories by Rudyard Kipling, which, as you might imagine, have all the stories about Mowgli in the Jungle Book. Um, Bagheera, the wolf pack, etc. Um, it's quite damaged in terms of, like, there's water damage here and stuff, but the spine is still in really good shape, so I think I can pull it apart and use it for some good. Um, I think I've read the Mowgli stories and the Just So stories several times, and I enjoyed them thoroughly. Glad I know about them, um, but I don't think I'm going to reread them, so I won't feel bad about pulling this one apart. This one's called The Golden Treasury, and it is from 1932. And it is full of poems. Now, have I told you guys about my love of the 1930s? Ooh, look, there's a piece of old paper sucked in my there, inside there. When I was in college, I took a class um, that was period studies in American literature. And so the professor gets to choose a period of American history and you study the literature of that time. And our amazing professor chose the 1930s, and we dove deep into the literature, the poetry, the art. Um, we did, like, external research projects, and, and we had experts come in. There was a lady that came in and talked to us about jewelry from that time period. We learned about quilting from that time period. My external research project was on bread making from that time. My grandma, whose bread I still make, carrying on the family tradition, um, was born in 1931, so she was a child of that time period. And um, her mother used to make her underwear out of the bread flour sacks, which was really kind of cute story. So anyway, I love learning about the 1930s, and just seeing that that book was printed in the 30s makes me go, aww. Okay, you don't have time for all these side stories. <clears throat> okay, this is another good one that um, the cover's a really nice size because it's taller. And I don't know if I'll use any of the pages because it is a religious book. It's called The Doctrines of Salvation. Um, but I can collage with the paper, I guess. Ooh, is there something stuck in here? A little name card. So someone named Mrs. J.A. Mercer used to own this book. This one look at how old and gorgeous this is like seriously um you can't even see very well but the title of this is bible stories and unfortunately someone's child has scribbled that makes me sad um because look at all this old old paper okay so this is copyright 1902 and there aren't any illustrations it's just all like retelling stories of the Bible. Um, oh, there's a map in the back, though. Let's see, what's it a map of? The Journeys of St. Paul. He did journey quite a bit. This is another just gorgeous old cover. It says built-in furniture, and it's quite a tall cover. Um, I, I like making those bigger size books every now and again. Um, it's a lot about building, furniture making, etc. as you may have guessed from the title. So we've got some diagrams, some regular text, etc. on this really lovely like nice heavyweight paper. Oh look at this cute one. This is like my dad. He even has a mustache. Of course my dad would never wear a suit to build in but you know. Okay what's next here? Got some little magazines. This I found a few of these called the Work Basket, which is a sewing magazine. Um, this is from 1954. Cost all of 15 cents, and it's got just ads and information about sewing, crafting, etc. Um, you can see just kind of lots of vintage paper inside, which is always good to have. We also have this one, um, Coates and Clark's Style Right Sweaters for the Family, 1963. Cute pictures, more just kind of vintage stuff. There's several more of these work basket magazines. Um, this one is from 1969, 1959, 1969 again, and 1954. Here we have a cute 
cookbook Home Baking Made Easy by Virginia Roberts. Tested recipes from the Occident Home Baking Institute. Um, let's check the date on this one. Oh, I'm not seeing copyright information. What? Aha. Uh -huh. Found it. 1944. It's teeny, teeny, tiny. 1944. Um, so... As you may suspect, we've got a bunch of recipes for baking. Um, these little tabby folders have pockets in them, which I could definitely turn into something. Or I could just keep the book because I like to bake. This one is New Hand Knits. Okay, so this magazine was 60 cents when it was released. This is volume 70 of their um, magazine. And the year is listed in Roman numerals. And we have some other gorgeous vintage ladies, which are always handy. Aw. Next thing. National Geographic Magazine from July of 1941. So we have some pictures in color, a lot in black and white, and... It is 1941, so we are going to be seeing some wartime military crap here, I'm sure. Yep. There you go. I didn't mean to say crap. I mean, it just makes me mad thinking about stupid Hitler. Anyway, <laughs> as I was flipping through it, though, I did see... Um, an advertisement that was so so darling this is for GE refrigerator and look at that look at how cute that is it almost looks like one of those paintings from the Saturday Evening Post so cute this is a little book um, full of mini records so it's just got sleeves in it and and then some records and it says play and win the quiz games on your yellow and white phonics cards and, and the whole collection of this is the sound way to easy reading which is kind of fun considering that I used to teach reading and I'm such a book nerd um, also something you can do with records now I'm gonna have to figure out a solution for this hole in the middle because um, the last time I did this was a record with a very small hole but you can find something um, glass and you put this over top of it and you put it in the oven and it starts to melt down around it and you can shape it into a bowl. I have a bowl out on my dining room table made out of an old record. If I decide to try this again, I might film it. Let me know in the comments below if you want to see that. Um, and hopefully I won't burn down my house. Here is another um, non-traditional kind of book. It is a photo album. I got this for the spine. Just want it for the cover and spine. Um, the end papers are really cool too. They're kind of like a yellow splatter kind of thing. Another book is Automobiles and Motorcycles, the Smithsonian Collection. So this is like old, old, old vehicles. Old, old. Um, but just more cool pictures. Of vintage things for me to include in junk journals. This book is by Life Magazine. It is the Nature Library series. This is the C volume and I was flipping through it and I just really liked um, seeing some of the pictures and I thought okay maybe I can use some of these in my Hawaii junk journal. Um, for example, there is a jellyfish right here. And I saw quite a few jellyfish um, at Hukilau Beach when we were there. We've got some more pictures of beaches and just different things. Pictures of waves. And, you know, if, if a few pages come in handy and I got it for super cheap, then it's worth it. Also, we've got to look at this spread here. Look at this beautiful illustration. Under the sea, under the sea. The next book I got is one that is actually pretty new. I think it only came out a few years ago, 2018. Um, Tyler Johnson was here by Jay Coles. 
let me know if you any of you guys have read this in the space below. I remember, um, I think it was Emma from Emma, Emma Books talking about this book and how she was selected to read um, a preview copy and she loved it so, so much. And when I saw it there at Goodwill, I was like, oh, I might as well just grab it and try it. I mean, worst case situation, I have another book to use for altered books and junk journals. Speaking of which, here's another book that I got for that very purpose. This is Standing in the Rainbow by Fanny Flagg, which, if you haven't read anything by Fanny Flagg, I highly recommend reading Fried Green Tomatoes at the Whistle Stop Cafe. It is phenomenal. Similar to the book, but of course not this, or similar to the book, it is the book. Similar to the movie, but of course not the same. Um, this is a big, chunky book um, with a nice wide spine, which is why it caught my eye. This must have fallen out of one of the books. First Security Bank of Idaho. And it looks like, oh my gosh, someone's written a recipe on the back of here. Zucchini, onion, salt. Like, looks like they're making some kind of vegetable dish. That's kind of cute. If it didn't have onions in it, I might be interested. Um, this was a loose back um, cover of a book. And I liked it because it had the alphabet. This I got for one of my students. Um, and if he doesn't want it, I can use it for, for collage fodder or other junk journaling things. It is a booklet about the P-38 Lightning Airplane. This particular student loves anything military. And he, like, just, I don't know, he just loves it. Um, when the Top Gun Maverick movie came out, he told me that was the greatest movie he'd ever seen. Not because of Tom Cruise or the music or the funny characters or anything, but because of the planes. <laughs> so I just saw this and thought, oh, I'm going to get this and see if he wants to look at it. Alright, this book is an art book by Thomas Kincaid. It is called Beyond the Garden Wall, or Beyond the Garden Gate, excuse me. And it's just got gorgeous Thomas Kincaid art. If you're unfamiliar with his work, he does a lot of landscapes and absolutely gorgeous. Some of his work has been turned into puzzles and calendars and all kinds of things. Um, so these are just some really, really beautiful papers. All right. Are you ready for the last item we got at Goodwill Outlet? <laughs> We've been talking about this for a while. Okay. So the last one is an English textbook. I am an English teacher, so this makes perfect sense. I can use pages from here. I can use the cover. If they have a magic trick to get 8th graders to capitalize the word I, I would really like that. <laughs> okay, we're on to our next location. That was the Clever Octopus. Um, so you saw a little bit of the store. It had so much. Like, I just scratched the surface. There were tons of fabrics, tons of different art supplies. They had a selection of books. It wasn't great. I didn't end up getting any books there. Um, but tons of just stuff. And the lady at the checkout counter, I mentioned her, Marianne, um, she asked if I did workshops. And I said, no, I haven't because no one else where I live does junk journaling. And... She goes, oh, well, let us know if you're interested. Um, and I looked on their website, and they do have some classes. They don't have them listed, though. You have to fill out this form first. So I want to send them an email and say, okay, before I fill out the form, can you just tell me what classes you have available and stuff? Um, I've been really inspired lately to do, like, an art workshop where you're in person with other people. So I've signed up for one in April that's going to be back in Salt Lake um, that's mixed-media collaging. Uh, at a place called Workshop Salt Lake City, and I'm really, really excited to do that one. So I'll let you know how it goes, but in the meantime, we need to get back to Clever Octopus and the things that we found there. So we'll start with some lace. You have some really gorgeous lace. It does have some black stitching on it, but that can be easily trimmed off. Just a very lovely, lovely piece of lace, and it's got that like nice aged color to it. I think this was $4. This pack seems like wedding crafty kind of stuff, 
which will help with my white woe like journal that I'm gonna make and it was six dollars for the whole pack so we'll just open it up together and see what all is inside there's tacky glue it's a it's a partially used bottle but glue is glue right um, we have quite a few of these blossoms here that can be added to something there's a bigger white rose here some more flowers there's some little sprigs with some little uh, like beads on them we have uh, like a thing of of pearly ribbon it's marked for $8.99 so right there we've got more than what we paid for this bag this I'm guessing is the structure for like a bridal headband because it could go like here after you've woven stuff in and made your veil and that kind of thing um, I can use this for cosplay stuff I can make maybe like a bookish crown out of it or something I don't know um, just some more floral bits here more flowers there's a theme and this other package inside the package which has more flowers and white lace all very very usable up next this is a roll that has like some washi stickers on it and the first sticker is a stack of books and I was like yep sign me up here we've got some kind of goblet with some flowers there's some text here birds so this will be just pretty to kind of play with all the text is in gold I think this was a dollar I have this spool of like this kind of dusty pinkish trimming I think this was also a dollar they had tons like an entire rack of bins full of wallpaper and I easily could have bought like tons but I was good and I just picked out a few pieces so this is a purple piece with a grid pattern on it I'm gonna save this for my football journal for next season I did an entire football junk journal for the last season um, if you don't know I take photos at all the home games for my boys and some away games if I feel like traveling and I made a junk journal last year putting in a bunch of my favorite photos and memories from the games etc every time the dink boys made me cry I swear anyway that's a story for another day <laughs> this piece just had some beautiful um, print on it so I quite liked that this one is some faux leather in blue with some kind of stenciling happening there this one has a really lovely texture it's got some like gold tones in it and, and some silver as well and I got a few of these um, vintage prints. So this one's got kind of like this brown color. This one's more gold. And this one's like a reddish orangey. And this is a great big bundle. Um, it was for $17 and as I take everything out you'll see it was, it was well worth it first we have a bunch of stickers and a lot of this seems to be wedding themed which is good because it can help me with my my white journal but um, not all of it is there's quite a bit of gold and stuff so I'm just gonna show you some of these stickers Here we have a paper pack. Oh, it's even sealed on the side, so no one's been and used it. Um, so maybe just to make my life easier in this video quicker, we'll just show you some of the examples here. So we've got quite a few prints. Look at those bird nests, that's super cute. Some more. This is another sealed pack, so I'll show you on the back here. Looks like we've got quite a few solids. Then this is things like Sweet Home, Journey Beat, Blessings, some little 
faces and things. Those seem to match the tall sticker packs. I know you guys aren't getting a super great look at this, but there you go. Up next, I have a whole bunch of um, paper sample books. And these, I'm guessing, are things that like their sales reps would give to companies when they're stocking paper. Um, this one is just called Bright White. And so you can open it up here and we've got these, all these pieces of paper that are just sample pieces to play with. So just the white on white doesn't look super fun um, at first glance, but as we look at some of the other ones, you'll see that there's lots of pieces here. This one is Royal Marble. So lots of marbled pieces in a lot of pastel colors. This one is called Astro Bright. So we've got very bright pieces and you can see they get bigger and bigger as you go down the the row. This one is fiber. So the papers do look similar to handmade paper. Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see that very well in the viewfinder, but there are little speckles and things within the pages. These other ones are from a different brand. So these ones are from Wasau Papers, and these are from Nina Paper. So look at this one when you open it up. It's just scrappy pieces. Scrappy, scrappy pieces. And then, sorry, I'm not showing this very well. Um, the middle and the right-hand sections, though, are the ones that we want to look really with. Here we've got some more just layered pieces of paper. And they're all together in a collection, which will be super handy to just, like, pull out the pieces that go together and play with them. So this pack was very neutral. Um, this is their recycled paper pack. This one's called Classic Columns. So I don't know how well you can see this, but it, there's a texture that's done in columns on that yellow paper. Um, you can, it's also done on the white paper. I don't know if you'll be able to see it at all. Um, and some more waterfalls of paper. All of this is that textured in columns paper. So there's some pastels. There's some more like core colors here. You can see these colors here. Sorry, I'm really not showing this well. I'm nervous that I'm going to run out of time on my camera battery and it's, it's driving me nuts. Okay, so this one is called Classic Laid Papers. And I'm just going to see if I can hold it up like this. So we've got some lovely blue and neutral colors here. And some more neutral tones here. We have some linen finish papers. Maybe I'll just do this instead of worrying about the flipping. And these are cotton finish papers. Very, very neutral white and creamy colors and grays. We're down to two items left from the Clever Octopus, and they are mystery sticker packs. Well, it happened. <laughs> the camera battery died, but we're all set up to record well plugged in, so I don't need to freak out and be so flustered anymore. Kind of nice feeling. Okay, so as I was saying, these sticker packs are a mystery. They're $2, and I got two of them. Um... Um, if I find stickers in here that I hate or that I don't use, I can give them to my students. They take anything. I have a box in my classroom that's called the free stuff box and anything I put in there, they will take. So right on top, we have some purple letter stickers. There is one that has been used and then the C is a little wonky, like it's been pulled up and then put back. Um, but purple is my school color. So definitely good. Oh, <gasps> cute. Oh my goodness. Okay, so this is called Jolie's Boutique Embellishments Parisian Collection. These little chairs, they're on like little picks. I could cut the pick part off though and just use them as chair embellishments. So cute. So this is priced for $1.50 and this is probably a few dollars. So we've already made our money on the sticker pack. Uh, this looks like it is for some baby boy scrapbooking. Not something I need. 
also for a baby scrapbooking. Oh, this will be perfect for my kids. Little peace, love, bright colors. More of the same baby boy pieces there. We have some splashes. So a lot of the stuff's going to go to school, but that's okay. My kids make art journals and all kinds of things they need scrappy stuff for. These aren't stickers, but there you go. The letter L. And maybe I could do something with those. It appears that you can draw on them. So you have this set here that's kind of like a coordinating little set called Scrappy Tabs. We've got some pinks and blues and greens and browns. Another one of those, exact same things. And another scrappy set that's like more light blues and neutrals. So far, nothing completely unusable. If I mean, if my students couldn't use stickers, then there would be some that I'd be like, eh, garbage. But like I said, they'll take anything. I got these two packs from different shelves. They had like a bunch of these. So we start off with a winter hat. Ooh, some more of these Varsity Alphabet stickers. One, two, three sheets, all of them purple. Yes! Definitely these two packs have been, been worth the $4 that I spent total on them. More baby stuff. More baby stuff. More baby stuff. Snow fun more of the letter L. So these, even though I guess I thought I got them from different shelves, they must have been packed by a similar person or from the same collection or whatever. That's okay. I'll use what I can use and my kids will take the rest. All right. These have some cute, um, like purple and green tag shaped stickers and some other little bits. I can use those. Oh, we have more scrappy tabs. So these two are pinks and browns. Looks like these are uh, friendship theme stickers. I see friend for life. The friends were flowers I'd pick you. Kindred spirits. Oh, I could use the kindred spirits one um, for an Anne of Green Gables thing. More purple and green. Could use that other stuff we saw. Some long strip stickers. More long strips. Here's some more tag kind of stickers. These are brown and greens. Wildernessy. I can use those. These are kind of cute. I might be able to use them for something. More and more long strips. An almost entirely used sticker pack. <laughs> some orange and blue things there to do with bike riding. There's some fall stickers. Some more fall stickers. More fall. And more scrappy tabs. So we have two more of the pink and green and blue and brown and two more of the blue and neutral overall worth it like the stickers I'm keeping to use for myself are easily worth more than four dollars so was it worth it to get these bonus packs yes okay where did I go after this Barnes and Noble all right so this might be kind of shocking but I had some Hawaii money left over I know right um <laughs> so I got to go treat myself to some new books at Barnes and Noble I did go to the Sugar House one. I have um, filmed in there before. It has the big escalator that goes up to the YA section. It's magical. It's amazing. Um, I headed first to the middle grade section, and you saw in the vlogging footage um, I found some puppets. I didn't end up buying any puppets. I have a great big tub full of puppets, and my eighth graders at the end of the school year, if they finished all the required projects that they need to do, they get to write and perform their own puppet show. And I was just looking at some of the puppets they had, and that pig that made that little little snuffling, honking, whatever sound was so cute. Of course, we had the um, white snowy owl that looked like Hedwig and some other really nice puppets. Those are all folk madness puppets, and they're absolutely stunning, gorgeous puppets, beautiful quality, very well made. Also, the price reflects that, so I didn't end up buying any. I just stuck to books this time. Um, I picked up a few middle grade and then some uh, YA, and uh, we'll just dive on into them, right? Okay, so we're going to start with the two middle grade books that I picked up. These were both on the buy one, get one 50% off table, so that's always a good sign. Um, these are both monthly picks. This one was a past monthly pick, and this is the current monthly pick. So we'll start with this one. The gal that uh, uh, was at the checkout counter said that she read this, and she just loved it. It is Dustin Grimm by Chuck um, Wendig. 
and it tells us 13 year old molly doesn't know how she got the short end of the stick being raised by her neglectful father while dustin the older brother she's never met got their mother and the keys to the family estate but now the siblings are both orphaned molly come molly's come home for her inheritance and if dustin won't welcome her into the family business she'll be she will happily take her half in cash there's just one problem the family business is a mortuary for monsters it's going to take all of Dustin's stuffy supernatural knowledge and Molly's most heroic cosplay, plus a little help from non-human friends, for the siblings to save the day if only they can get along for five minutes. So I'm really excited about this. Also, the cover's just cute. Like, if you're looking for a middle grade adventurous story, maybe a little spooky, this is the cover that you'd want, right? And the gal at the checkout, um, she reads a lot of middle grade as she says that she hadn't got to this one yet, but it's on her list and she's been hearing nothing but rave reviews about it. It is The Witch, The Sword, and The Cursed Knights. The tagline says, find the sword, break the curse, and the author is Alexandria Rogers. It says on the back, 12-year-old Ellie can't help that she's a witch, one of the most hated members of society. Determined to prove her worth and eschew her heritage, Ellie applies to the Fairy Godmother Academy, her golden ticket to societal acceptance. But Ellie's dreams are squashed when she receives the dreaded dra draft letter to serve as a knight of King Arthur's legendary round table. She can get out of the draft, but only if she saves a lost cause. Enter Cadmon. A boy from Wisconsin struggling with the death of his best friend. He first dismisses the draft as ridiculous. Magic can't possibly exist. But when Merlin's ancient magic foretells his family's death, if he doesn't follow through, he travels to the knight's castle, where he learns of a wicked curse, curse leeching the knights of their power. To break the curse, Ellie and Cadmon must pass a series of deathly trials and reforge the lost, shattered sword of Excalibur. And unless Ellie accepts her witch magic and Cadmon rises to become the knight he's meant to be, they will both fail and the world will fall to the same darkness that brought King Arthur and Camelot to ruin. Dang. I hope that they do well. There is a sequel to this book. Apparently it is coming out this fall called The Beast, the Queen, and the Lost Knight. So I need to read this before the fall comes so that I can read the sequel in time. But then knowing me, I'll want the paperback to match this paperback. Anyway, you get the idea. All right, so I got those two middle grades, and then I have six YA books. Let's start with Long Live the Pumpkin Queen by Shay Earnshaw. Um, now, I have already read this. I listened to the audiobook on Libby and absolutely adored it, and I have students who would really like to read it, so I did pick up a copy. This is the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition that has special content. In the back, it has a recipe book, Sally's Book of Potions, Home Remedies, and Apothecary Cures. So, for example, she has Pumpkin Queen Perfume, Corpse Skin Strug Scrub, Swamp Water Face Steam and Dreamtown Pillow Mist. Will I be playing with those recipes? Quite possibly. Now this little booklet, it is glued into the back. Oh, it's with that gummy stuff. Okay, I'm just going to peel it right up. It's about to say, my students don't get to have this book. They can look at it after they've read the novel if they want to. But when I've had stuff like this in books in the past, they tend to lose it. So I'll just hang on to that part and let them know that they can come look at it after the book has been finished. Next up, I picked up a couple off of the YA buy one, get one 50% off um, table. And this book is chock full of award stickers. It is The Marrow Thieves by Sherry Dimaline. Um Let's take a look at some of these awards. If I can get the buy one 50% off sticker, we can see this other one. So Canada Reads selection. Canada Council for the Arts, Governor's General Liter Literary Awards, the Kirkus Prize winner, not a small deal right there, Amy Mather's Teen Book Award winner, um, Burt Award for First Nations, Inuit, and Metis Young Adult Literature, 2018 winner. Let's find out what this book is about. Just when you think you have nothing left to lose, they come for your dreams. In a world nearly destroyed by global warming, the indigenous people of North America are being hunted for their bone marrow which carries the key to recovering something the rest of the population has lost, the ability to dream. Frenchie and his companions struggling to survive don't yet know that one of them holds the secret to defeating the marrow thieves. Interesting. That's all it tells us. It's just a whole bunch of listings of awards and other things. We got some that we didn't even see on the front cover, a Globe and Mail Best Book, School Library Journal Best Book of the Year, Quill and Choir Best Book of the Year, New York Public Library Best Book for Teens, finalist for the 2018 White Pine Award, 
winner of the 2018 One Book, One Brampton Award. Holy cow. I smell a good book. I mean, that many award committees have, could not be wrong. Up next, we have The Sacrifice by Rin Chupeco. I have read another book from her and really, really enjoyed it. This one says, Pristine beaches, lush greenery, and perfect weather. The island of Kisapmata would be the vacation destination if not for the curse. The Filipino locals speak of it in hushed voices and refuse to set foot on the island. They know the lives, lives it has claimed they won't be next. A Hollywood film crew won't be dissuaded. Legend claims a dreamer god sleeps, waiting to grant unimaginable powers in exchange for eight sacrifices. The producers are determined to document the evidence, and they convince Alon, a local teen, to be their guide. Within minutes of their arrival, a giant sinkhole appears, revealing a ballet tree with a mummified corpse entwined in its gnarled branches. And when the crew starts seeing strange visions, Alon knows they are falling victim to the island's curse. If Alon can't convince them to leave... There is no telling who will survive or how much the dreamer god will destroy. Up next is another book that I heard about from a librarian. I think it was maybe at the book training I did a few months ago. Um, That's Not What Happened by Cody Kaplinger. So it says here, it's been three years since the Virgil County High School massacre. Three years since my best friend Sarah was killed in a bathroom stall during the mass shooting. Everyone knows Sarah's story that she died proclaiming her faith, but it's not true. I know because I was with her when she died. I didn't say anything then, and people got hurt because of it. Now Sarah's parents are publishing a book about her, so this might be my last chance to set the record straight, but I'm not the only survivor with a story to tell about what did and didn't happen that day. Except Sarah's martyrdom is important to a lot of people, people who don't take kindly to what I'm trying to do. And the more I learn, the less certain I am about what's right. I don't know what will be worse, the guilt of staying silent or the consequences of speaking up. This could be uh, triggering for me because it is about a school shooting and I am a school teacher. It's, it's a hard issue for anyone to wrap around the, in their br- brains. So this couldn't have been from my most previous library training because it's copyright 2018. So maybe I just remember the description from another training I did because I'm certain I heard about it at a training from librarians. Anyway, it sounds like it could be good but hard. Okay, so this is the second to last book that I picked up, and the cover was just kind of calling out to me, and it wasn't until I got home that I realized it's a sequel. <sighs> this is Trespassers by Claire McFall. The first book is Fairy Man, so rather than like spoil myself and you for sequel stuff, I'm going to read to you the Amazon description of the first book, Fairy Man. I will pop a picture up of the cover somewhere, maybe over here. Um... So this says, after a deadly train crash, the afterlife is waiting for Dylan, but that's only if she and her intriguing fairy man can make it across the demon-infested wasteland and if she can bear to let him go. When Dylan wakes up after her train has crashed, she thinks she has survived unscathed, but she couldn't be more mistaken. The bleak landscape around her isn't Scotland, it's a wasteland, a terrain somehow shaped by her own feelings and fears, a border to whatever awaits her in the afterlife. And the stranger sitting by the train track is an ordinary teenage boy. Tristan is a ferryman, tasked with guiding Dylan's soul safely across the treacherous landscape, a journey he has made a thousand times before, only this time something is different. The crossing is ever as perilous, with ravenous wraiths hounding the two at each day's end, hungry for Dylan's soul. But as Dylan focuses her strength on survival with Tristan as protector, challenger, and confidant, she begins to wonder where she is truly meant to be and what she must risk to get there. Alrighty, um... So there are three books in the series, it looks like, and I'm looking um, to see if all three of them are out now. So the third one, so we have Ferryman, and then the one I just showed you, Trespassers, and the third one is called Outcasts, and yeah, it looks like it's out as well. So I might as well just stick them in my, uh, my Amazon cart. Another one that was also just the only copy there on the shelf, um, the author's name caught my eye. This is Jared Schusterman, which is Neil Schusterman's son, and Sophia La Puente. The book is Retro. Cute cover, right? Lots of retro things on the back. I mean, many of these things are from my childhood. (laughs) Um, Very cute, like rainbow ombre the situation on the dust cover too dust jacket excuse me um this story is about teens who have to like give up technology and kind of become retro uh it says it was never meant to happen this way things were never supposed to get this out of hand 
After a cyberbullying incident at her school goes viral, Luna Iglesias finds herself at the heart of a brewing controversy when the social media company Limbo, who is also implicated in the scandal, sweeps in with an offer that sounds like an opportunity to turn over a new leaf and receive a scholarship to the college of her dreams, Luna's happy to jump at the chance. It's called the Retro Challenge, where contestants live without modern technology, wear vintage clothes, party as if the future wasn't already written, and fall in love as if they were living in a movie. At first, the challenge is fun, but when things get dangerous, kids start disappearing, including Luna's friends. There are voices in the woods, blood red markings on the trees, and Luna increasingly begins to wonder if all these strange happenings are connected with the retro challenge. So it started off fun and a scholarship opportunity, but now it's getting dangerous and scary. Secrets, lies, betrayal, the weight of her family on her shoulders. There's so much on, on the line for Luna, not to mention she's falling in love with the last guy she expected. Uh-oh. Unless she can figure out the truth behind who's really sabotaging the challenge, the next person to disappear may be Luna herself. And here's a look at our two authors. I like how they did the picture um, in the sunglasses. It's super cute. So that's the end of the books. Now, I didn't mention this in the earlier part of the video with the vlogging stuff, but I did go to TJ Maxx. I had a specific thing that I wanted to look there for, and I found it. So... I'll be right back. We'll show you those last couple things and then we'll wrap this sucker up. Okay, so here's a story for you. Uh, about a month-ish ago, maybe, I was at a TJ Maxx near me. It was like an hour away, but the nearest one to me. And saw this organization thing that was like 12 drawers. And it was like, looked really handy for organizing supplies and stuff. And it was like $32. I'm like, oh, I don't know if that's a good deal or not. But I went ahead and got it. Because at TJ Maxx, like, if you don't get it then, then you, somebody else is probably going to buy it. And there you go. So I got it home. And I looked it up by the brand name and what it was and stuff. It's like the cheapest one I can find is $150. And I got it for $32. What the crap. So since then I've been wanting to check out another TJ Maxx to see if they have more because they are really handy for organizing stuff. So I went to the TJ Maxx in Park City and found two. So this is the same size as the last one that I got. It is 12 drawers, three by four. And at this one it was $35, but still like I just barely looked it up on Amazon and it was $146.50 or something like that for this Sysmax system. S-Y-S-M-A-X. And then also, they had one that was slightly smaller, so I just snatched that one too. And this is a 3x3. Three three. So the two big ones I'm going to set next to each other, and then this one will go on top. I have oodles of stuff that I can use to organize. And they also come with, um, if this wasn't like wrapped up in plastic I'd show you they come with these little dividers that you can put into some of the drawers if you want to make sections which is really handy too so I am super excited about my finds there and now I've spent like way too much money <laughs> uh, such is life you work to earn the money and then you spend it so this has been a really long video, and I'm sorry for the giant length, but we had a lot to get through. So I'm going to go now, and I want to wish you all a wonderful, magical, and bookish, slash crafting, slash whatever day. Happy reading. Adios.